we train ourselves to think and feel exactly as we do about everything. And even though uh, we may feel ourselves victim of many circumstances, of many points of view, at our essence, we are never a victim. We, we, it's impossible to be a victim of point of view. It really is. And so the first step is really taking responsibility for points of view. It really is. That, that's the initial step, to, to just decide at heart, to make a real commitment to go to any lengths whatsoever to allow point of view to be as it is. And that's really where the four mainstays come in. And what, what was spoken so beautifully by each one of you when you came up to the microphone, and what is obvious in all of you sitting there, is that you are taking responsibility for the actual nature of your points of view. And that is a valiant act. That alone is a valiant act. Just that brings so much benefit to society. It brings inconceivable, unimaginable benefit. The kind of benefit that could never be explored through logic and reason. The benefit of taking responsibility for points of view is so vast that if, if we could comprehend the vastness of it, everyone just like that would be taking short moments or relying on the four mainstays to make it a little broader. Our points of view, whatever they are, they're, uh, they just are whatever they are. So when we're born, we train ourselves in our points of view from then on. So the easiest way is to just say, okay, I'm responsibility. I'm responsible for my points of view, whatever they are, because that's what it boils down to. And um, a lot of the searching that goes on is done just because uh, there's no idea of where to look or what to rely on. Uh, a lot of the, the books don't help or they have a relief that is temporary and then it goes away. And so when we get older, we really start to recognize the pain of it. Sometimes when we're children, we recognize the pain. And then we can just look into the future and project our pain out into the future. What it's going to be like when we get in some of these afflictive states. So the, the first thing to, to really understand, especially these days, when there's so much misinformation and pseudo-information about the search is and uh, looking for something else, is that there, the, the, the search does not end in some kind of mental state, like stillness. Uh, the end of the search is at the coincidence of stillness and frenzy. That's where it is. So you see, the, 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 the end of the search is in instinctive recognition that clarity, as we're calling it here, is spread equally and evenly throughout all points of view. And um, there is no state to arrive at. So trying to replicate a state that was arrived at at some other time couldn't possibly occur because clarity is only in the here and now. The only evidence we have is the here and now. This is crucial. It is totally crucial. And the, the, the enormous change, really, is that 
there is the end of self-focus and this outpouring of tremendous spontaneous beneficial energy. Doesn't mean that the thoughts stop, although that can be nice, you know. It, it's an equal opportunity program. All the points of view have equal opportunity. <laughs> and so this is just the way it is. And there is incredible relief and release in that. There is total release. The, the uh, first of all, upon the introduction to clarity, we know that we're by nature beneficial. We know where to go. We know to go to clarity. And so you see that is uh, a demonstration immediately of beneficial intent. And just as the obviousness of clarity becomes more tacit and certain, so too does the obviousness of altruism benefit of all, the welfare of others, which always includes ourself, you see. And uh, the thoughts that, that are so obsessive or frenetic that involve uh, thoughts, emotions, sensations, all these different kinds of bodily things that are going on, they mellow out. They mellow out and they shift to the even spread. You see, and, and then the, there's just, that is more and more obvious every single minute of life. So there's no destination to get to, no state to get into whatsoever. Now, initially, by the way, this is just an introduction to the talk I'm going to give. <laughs> Initially, after introduction to clarity, there's, there is uh, what we call cat watching a mouse clarity. And this is the observer clarity watching all the little mice, points of view. And so, this is the way it is for many people. Sometimes people get it, get it right away, you know, like we heard today. And so it, it, it can be whatever it is. Now, uh, that is an important time to use the Four Mainstays as a support from the very beginning, to really rely on the teacher uh, and the training media and the, and the worldwide community. It's a, a combined pattern of instruction, you could call it. Through the four mainstays, very quickly there will no longer be cat watching a mouse clarity. Instead, you'll recognize that um, points of view, self-release. They self-release in, of, as, and through clarity. The points of view are the shining forth of the clarity view. Take a very close look at them, and it's easy to see. If you really, really take a look, you'll see. You can't really find where they began, where they lived their lifespan, and where they ended including the point of view of you. <laughs>